Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by... Southern Indiana Pediatrics, part of IU Health Southern Indiana Physicians. For decades, parents in our community have trusted their children's care to Southern Indiana Pediatrics. Learn more at siphysicians.org. The Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you. Hey, Maddie, did you know that up until 1920, it was legal to mail people through the U.S. Postal Service? Really? Let's go to the post office! Woo! Woo Welcome to the Friday Zone, everybody. I'm Maddie. And I'm Taylor. <laughs> Today's show was all about getting from here <laughs> to there. That is absolutely right. And what a better way to travel than with a jetpack. A jetpack? Yeah. Our friends, the Recess Monkeys, will show you how it's done right now on the Friday Zone I don't playlist. It. I don't believe do, 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 do. Play it. Drum. No, oh. I'm the guitar. You oh, play the drum. Dang it. <laughs> I know it. Whoa, yeah. Whoa, what are you doing? There, look at my new jetpack. Isn't it cool? It, it's a vacuum cleaner. No, it's a jetpack. Look, it's got this awesome button for flying in the oh, air. It's, off button. it's an attachment. It's a vacuum cleaner. No, it's a jetpack. Here, I'll show you. In the morning, I get out of bed to put a helmet on my head. Time for a quick bite. I'm ready to help out with my red Nelson's clothesline is now hanging just fine thanks to my Mommy's side, just give me a shout. I'm ready to help out with my red. Jet, 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 I've got my J T P A C K with me, with me, with me. I've got my J T P A C K with me, with me, with me.
Welcome back, everyone. Up next, let's hit the trails as we check out a cool sport, cyclocross, and this Friday's own field trip. Wow. Hi, I'm Audrey, and I'm here at Blooming Cross, a cyclocross race. So we're going to show you what it's all about. I'm here with Lewis and you just had a recent win. Can you tell me about that? Well, yesterday was state championships and I got the silver medal in it for Ohio. How long have you been racing? I've been racing juniors for this is my third year and I've been riding my bike for a really long time. So this is your first race ever? Tell me about it. Yeah, it was tricky. Um, we had to do a pre-lap before the race started, so I got to know the course a little bit better. And um, the turns were tricky, but I got around them. This is actually my brother's bike. I have a mountain bike at home. Um, but it, this is not not a cyclocross bike. It's a mountain bike. So it has thick tires instead of thin, and it doesn't have the cyclocross handlebars. So you don't need to have a special bike? Uh, I, it's it's better to have a cyclocross bike, but since it's my first race, I, I use this one. Can you tell us about your bike a little bit? Sure. These are a special type of wheels called tubular wheels, and you glue the tires onto the wheel. And then these are your brakes, then your shifter and your brake, then your handlebars, then the frame of your bike, the pedals of your bike, which you can clip into with these special shoes, and then the crank, the thing that moves around, your chain, you have your front derailleur and your rear derailleur that shifts the gears, and you have your um, cassette right there that you put the gears on, that the chain falls on, and you have your seat post and your seat. So is, is this bike like heavy, or like is it, do you have to like muscle it around, or is it, is it pretty light? Well, this bike is actually really light. Most of the time on a course there's a barrier where you have to lift your bike up over it and jump over the barrier. Oh, so that's why it's light, right? Yeah, that's why you need your bike to be light. I'm here with Coach John and he's the coach of the Red Zone team. We've got boys and girls on the team age 6 to about 18. Most of them are in the 6 to 12 year old age bracket. It's safe, it's fun, and it's just a neat sport. We just like yeah. do a lot of sports we together. A, we met at a mountain bike race. So do I need to like have any special qualifications or do I need to be like super awesome at being a bike racer to join? No, really anyone can start doing cycling anytime. Cyclocross or cycling or mountain biking, any type of cycling sport is easy to do. Cyclocross has a great fun vibe at the events. It's just a happy place to be, uh, very family friendly, very spectator friendly. It's a, it's a picnic kind of a day. Come and watch these kids, they're as fast as anything. Cyclocross! Hello, my name is Sam Bartlett and today I have a great stunt from the world of stuntology. All right, let's grab a balloon and a penny and a volunteer. Hey, Mark! Hey, thanks. Thanks for joining me. Here's your balloon, here's your penny. If you're ever bored, all you need is a balloon and a penny. Believe it or not, here's what you do. Take a penny and stick it inside a balloon. Can you do that? Actually, it's not that easy. I never really thought about it, but yeah, that's good enough. Now we're gonna do something. Yeah. All right, now we're going to inflate the balloon. Tie a knot, and we're going to make a peculiar device. It's kind of a gyroscope. What's a gyroscope? I don't know. Someone told me that. Now you're going to take this balloon, and you're going to shake it about four or five times, just like that, 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 and then stop all of a sudden. All right, try it again and then stop. All right, 
I'm going to assist you this time. Hold on. We're going to go. Now look at that. That penny is rolling around inside the balloon. It's the weirdest thing in the world. Why does the penny roll around inside the balloon? Nobody knows. It just happens. It's incredible. Good job. Oh, that's That Scientology was crazy. Let's do it. Do Ready? it! No, you have to put the penny in there. What? <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I got too excited. Okay. Oh my goodness. You put the penny in. I can't even get the penny in. Okay, okay. Okay, I got my penny in. I think. I don't think I got mine in. Sam makes it so much easier. Okay, I got mine in. Okay. Yours in? Ready? Yeah. Okay, I think that's big enough, right? That's tiny. You got a tiny little I can't little do it. Okay, here we go. Hold on. Look at that. How'd you do that? That's so fast. That's so, just shake it. Just... Whoa. Oh! <laughs> wow. We'll keep things rolling and popping along as we head to Greensburg, Indiana to see how cars are made in this Friday's own investigation. Stop it. Luke. Stop it. Oh! <laughs> Hey guys, we're here at the Honda factory in Greensburg, Indiana, and we're here to see every step in the making of one of these cars. All right, guys, we're here with Steve. What station are we at, Steve? Well, this is the stamping press. This is where it all begins. The car is born here. I'm seeing all these chunks of metal over here. What, what are these for? Well, the rectangles will become trunks, and the odd-shaped ones become doors. They get formed using the press into shapes for the car. Hoods, trunks, doors, and even parts of the frame. All right, so we're at the end of this huge machine, and I see that those uh, steel plates that we were looking at have been transformed into car doors. Yes, this is the inside of the door, and as you can see, the associates work very quickly. They have to check for cracks and any mistakes with the parts as they come off the line. All right, Steve, so we've moved on past the stamping and pressing station, and now we're here at the welding station. So what exactly is a weld? Well, a weld involves two pieces of steel and then heat. It actually is melting the steel from two pieces into one piece. So all the panels come together. It's the side panels, the front, the rear, and the floor all together. And then these robots use spot welds to combine the car together. Yeah, this is the frame of the car. This is everything that's steel on the car called a white body, and it's before it goes to paint. So after the uh, white body has been welded and everything, we're seeing that it gets sent into this big uh, bath that's electrically charged, right? And uh, what's that for, Jonathan? The tank that we see here is um, it's got an electrical charge, and what it is doing is applying a coating to that car, and that coating prevents the car from rusting, and uh, it makes your car last for a really long time. So now we're here at the painting station. We use robots to paint our, our cars. And here what we're doing is we're painting bumpers. Not only do we paint our body, but we also paint the bumpers to match that as well. We're here at the final stage of the painting process. So, uh, what, what's going on over here? This is the final step you know, really for us, making sure that there's no defects in the paint. There's no you know, little error marks. So we have people in here looking for those. All right, guys, I'm here with Mike. And we're at the uh, body assembly part of the factory. And uh, we just got done with paint. And so uh, what are we doing here? We remove the doors again to build them up. And when you uh, say build up the door, does that mean put in like the, the windows and the, the locks and all that? that that's correct. Yeah, we put windows, mirror, all the weather stripping, uh, door locks, all that sort of stuff. Man, it's amazing how this is becoming more and more like a Lego set to me. All right, Mike, we've seen them put gas in the car. They've added all the finishing touches. They've checked all the electronics. It looks to me like we got a finished product. Is this the end of the line? Uh, we do have a few more checks that we'll do on each and every car just to make sure it's totally ready for the customer. All right, guys, I'm here with Charles. And what I'm seeing here is a car that's wheels are spinning, but it isn't going anywhere. What are, what are they doing here, man? Here, they're checking the speed speedometer function, make sure it's accurate as close as possible. Here they're also doing the brake check. So you're basically just checking to make sure that all of the functions, you know, backwards and forward, all that works? Yes, correctly.
All right, guys, so we finally made it through the Honda factory. We've seen how cars go from a, a sheet of steel to this fine machine right here, and uh, I think we've seen all we need to see. Hit it, Charles. Let's go for a ride. And now time for some fun with our friends from Comedy Sports. All right, I'm Claire, this is Ed, and we are going to get Sydney and Willow to play this game with us. So come on up here, gals. Come on up, don't be Woo! shy. Now for this game of, uh, that's called Wii Connect, which might sound a little bit like a motion-based video game you've heard of, um, I am going to copy everything that Sydney does. So Sydney, stand right there. And Willow, if you could kind of scoot right down on that purple spot for me. Perfect. Now Ed is going to copy everything you do. We can't move unless you do, all right? So he has to, see how you're standing that way? He has to completely stand that way unless you turn around. Oh, there we go. Excellent. So, um, Joelle, give me uh, your favorite food. Oh, a falafel. Excellent. So, we are going to play the game of We Connect. Ed, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Ooh, Ooh. I am so hungry. You know, me too. You know, there's something I've been meaning to try that I haven't tried yet, what? and I've got one right over here. Oh, oh, here. What, what is it? It's a falafel. I've never heard of that before. I think that's not something you eat. It is. What's it made of? Good stuff. Uh, Try a bite. Uh, okay. Um, I'll I'll come and grab it from you. Uh, where to go? Where to go? <laughs> it's right. It's right here. Oh, uh, here. Come and get it. I feel like maybe I, maybe I shouldn't. I, you know, I, it's, I, it's, if it's the only falafel you've got, then I'll bring it to you. I'm willing to share. You're gonna bring it to me? Oh, and sure. You're so nice. <gasps> oh, can can you put it in my mouth for me? Oh! Ooh! <laughs> I feel weird. I feel weird. Is that is that beans I taste? Yes. It's a <gasps> oh. it's a bean falafel. You're allergic to beans, aren't you? Well, they make me spin in circles. <laughs> well, there's just a few. Oh, maybe it'll I'm, stop soon. I'm feeling a little weird. I feel like maybe I'm gonna jump up and down or something if I'm not careful. Oh. If I better start. Jumping up and down, well, maybe I won't be so sick. Oh, here, oh, this is helping. Here, a little different motion. Let me go get you a glass of water. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Please, uh, go quickly. Go quickly. Uh, I'm, I'm going I'm quickly. I'm spinning out of control. I, oh, I, I need you to pour it on my head, please, because that's the only way I'm gonna feel better. Oh, that's, that's nice. <sighs> All calm. Who knew that falafels could make me feel so nervous? Let's have another one. I don't know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and that's time. Good job. Good job, Willow. Good job, Sydney. High five. Nice job. All right.
This time on A Moment of Science, he's been using Brand X. A Moment of Science. Check this out. You're cruising down the street on your skateboard. In one hand, you have a tennis ball. Halfway down the street is an X painted on the ground. Your job, should you choose to accept it, is to drop the tennis ball from your hand so that it hits the X. When do you drop the ball? If you try this experiment yourself, you will find that most people will wait until they're right over top of the X before letting go of the ball. This, however, is incorrect. Why won't it work? Because you're carrying the ball, it already has a forward momentum. Drop it right over the X and it will land somewhere past where you want it to be. The effect will be the same as if you stood over the X and had thrown the ball forward. To hit the X, you need to drop the ball before you've reached it. And the faster you're moving, the earlier you need to let go. This is a difficult thing for a lot of people to believe. The carried ball feels like it's sitting still. But don't be fooled. From the point of view of someone standing by the X, the ball is, of course, moving as fast as you are. I'm Mandy Strife, and this has been a moment of science. Science, science. Do we have three? I can juggle. Welcome to the Earth Eats Test Kitchen. My name is Heather, and today we're gonna to make some sweet stuff roll-up. <gasps> what is in a sweet stuff roll-up? Well, let me tell you. I like to get a tortilla or a wrap, oh. whatever you have. Okay. And I use a little bit of cream cheese. Okay. A little bit of banana that's chopped. Oh yeah. And some fresh preserves that I just made, strawberry. Oh. It's really easy. Okay. You could do it. So so what do you put on first? Well, first I lay out my tortilla or okay. my wrap, and I put a little bit of cream cheese in the center. Okay. And this is really easy to do. You could do this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you could do it. Yeah. And use as much as you like. Okay. But if you use too much when you roll it up, it'll all squeeze out the sides. Ah, uh, that just, gets messy. It's huh? messy. So I'm just going to put a little bit in the center. Okay. That's it. All right, that looks good. It is good. And now I'm going to put a little bit of these fresh fruit preserves. Okay. I'm and, using and strawberries. And what does preserve mean? Well, you could also call it jelly oh. or jam. Got it. It's a little bit more chunky and fruity than a jelly. Yeah, yeah. I like it really. It's really good. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, yeah. And so now. What is next? I'm going to chop a banana. <gasps> banana. And bananas are soft, yeah. so you could use a butter knife okay. or a little plastic knife, something yeah. that you have. I'm going to use my big knife. Oh. It's faster. Ooh. That's, that's a scary knife. Well, this is just for the adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Felix would use a butter knife. Yeah. But it's not just for butter, right? Not just for butter. Right. It's also for bananas. Yeah, yeah. Banana and I'm knife. Sprinkle a little bit on there. Okay. Again, don't use too much. Yeah. You can just make another one. Okay. And I'm I bet, gonna roll I bet it up. monkeys would like this one, huh? They Heather? would love it. Yeah. Everyone seems to like this. Yeah. So I'm gonna roll it up really nice and tight. Okay. And that's it. All done? Yeah. No microwave? No microwave. Oh. No blender. No blend? Oh, no appliances. Thank goodness. That and blender is wow. It is. Yeah. It's really easy. Mm. And look how pretty it is on the inside. Oh. You can see the cream cheese and the bananas. Yeah. It smells good and yeah. it tastes even better. Oh, wait. Can I try? You can try it. What do you think? Oh, that is good. <laughs> oh, that is really good. Oh. Now I would give you both, but this one is for me. Oh, yeah. We have to share. We do have to share. Yes. Yeah. And it's really easy. And we did it together. Yes, we did. Team Feather. <laughs> Hey everyone, here's that recipe again. You can write it down or, or go to our website and watch Earth Eats right on your computer. Yeah, eating smart is more than easy. It's super simple. Hi.
Hi, it's me, Bob. I wish I could, I could drive a truck. But I can't because I'm a cat. In the Friday Zone. Friday. Well, it's joke time with Davy. Joke time with Jack. Joke time with Davy and Jack. Joke. I mean Jack. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the wooden car with the wooden wheels with the wooden motor? Wooden car, the wooden wheels, the wooden motor. I don't know what. It wouldn't go. <laughs> 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 In the Friday's own Fun show today, Taylor. Yeah, you know, we were talking about flying vehicles, and I have a surprise for you. Helicopters. <gasps> what? And remote controls. <laughs> Remember to check out our website, mm -hmm. fridayzone.org, where you can watch this episode and see behind the scenes photos from past episodes. But remember to live, learn, and play the Friday Zone way. We'll see here you go. here next week. I don't know you how to work this. Oh, you do. What am I not working on? There we go. That is not very good. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by Southern Indiana Pediatrics, part of IU Health Southern Indiana Physicians. For decades, parents in our community have trusted their children's care to Southern Indiana Pediatrics. Learn more at siphysicians.org. The Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you. <laughs>